Commit primary ignition. For Thursday, July 7th, 2022, it's the Sereno Squadcast, the official podcast of the Sereno Squad. <laughs> All right, Evan's like floating around in space. I don't know what's going on over there. All right, try number two. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Squadcast. This week we have the Squadcast, the whole the whole crew. We've got Evan. We've got Paul. Hello there. And we have Wayne. <laughs> all right yeah so we've got all sorts of fun stuff to talk about this week we've had a a troop hello there we've got some kenobi so let's just go right into the legion news yeah oh yeah we're gonna bring them in over clone boot with dusty trail that's true. That's true. Yeah. So uh, we had a troop in Christiansburg last month. I think it was the yeah. what, like the second week. Of yeah, the month or something. like the twelfth or thirteenth. Yeah, um, something like that. Yeah, early June. Yeah. So it, was, it was like after we came back from celebration. I think it was, think it was even earlier than that. Wasn't it? like the fifth or sixth? Wasn't it? Yeah. No, no, it was after celebration. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Back from celebration on the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. It yeah. was after. It was early June, and it was on a calendar somewhere that I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. We it have happened. proof. We have <laughs> where it happened. You can't yeah. prove me otherwise. <laughs> it's true. We have the proof. We'll have. To, we will show you all. Um, did you guys uh, have a good time? I, I wasn't able to make it. It was great. It was fun. Wayne, did you make it? No, I didn't go. I had okay. to work. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. We oh. uh we do those we do relay for life every year. Um, have we missed a year? Maybe we may have missed in 2020, but since then it's we've done it every year since I since I started. I don't know if it happened in 2020. I, yeah, I don't. Is it? Yeah. It would have been June 2020, which is in the middle of like the. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Time. No, that's that was yeah. quarantine times. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is the uh, huge section of my memory that is inexplicably missing. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> oh, so we have. Oh, oh yeah, we're bringing in not just any trooper. Legion news. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, or you, you can you can call him Captain or Sir. <laughs> <laughs> or not Commander. Man. Yeah, he, he was commander for like a day and a half. <laughs> Depends on the day. It didn't. It didn't go well. <laughs> yeah, it didn't last long. That's a really good picture, though. Looks really good. Is that yeah. Paul? What's how many? Uh, how many troops is that with Rex now? I think that's the third. I think I've done three. Nice. I might. I can't remember if it's two or three. No, well, three. You did the, was... uh, you, yeah, you did the 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 drive by trick trunk or treat. Yeah, and then the parade, and then there. And then the yeah, parade, three. and then there. Yeah. Yep. yep. I want to do it more, but it's I can't dress myself. <laughs> <laughs> been there. Yeah. Especially bad after I'd been on vacation for a week eating nasty, fatty foods, <laughs> and I was popping my plastic corset more than once. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. It's like suck in the gut and stand up straight. Yeah. Well, it looks good. You're doing great. Let's see. Good stuff. Wow. Wow. That is all of us. Oh, Unfortunately, you can't really zoom in anymore. All in front of an orange transporter. Very, very cool. If that, if that, if I'm not mistaken, on my left is Abby, Heather, uh, Frankie. Was Frankie was Stormtrooper. And then yep. Peter's in his 181st. Eric is Vader, I'm in Rex, and Evan is the Jedi. Yes, I was the I was the lone rebel. I decided to. I was I wasn't sure what the uh, I wasn't sure what the weather was going to be like, so uh, I figured it might be a little hot. Wanted to maybe go no helmet this time. Had more my Jedi and 
probably a year at least. So I figured it was time to break them out. And it was fun. Looks awesome. It looks like you're about to cut Rex down. <laughs> no, we Rex. fight together. Well, you, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't sneak up on him like that. Let's see. <laughs> All right, look at this. This is a cool uh, uh, montage of shots. Hey, you got to do the sequence to get the full effect. Yeah. Yeah. Because he just get Vader in the, with his cape just blowing magnificently and dramatically. <laughs> There's me just trying to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. What happened to Rex? Uh, I, I guess uh, Vader's going down memory lane. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here again. And the the orange trunk, the orange trunk, the orange truck was that was what Frankie's job is or something. What? That yeah, is a nice was, truck. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they were, build those. Yeah, it was. They brought it in from his work, so it was like yeah. that was his work table set up or something. I don't know. Wow, that's sweet. Very cool. Oh, what a great pick. Whoa. Yeah, you look about, like you're about to, you're, there's like, you know, a whole uh, horde of separatists and we're about to <laughs> kill some clankers. Yeah. Let's see. Looks good. Oh, there's another shot. Yeah. Different angle. Uh -oh. Vader's head in the back <laughs> uh, on the table. Uh, this, this is an alternate universe story. Gotcha. <laughs> I love the quaffed 80s hair you got going on. Yeah, it's really working too with the Jedi look. Gunner, can you still see my camera? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, my mom FaceTimed me and it like disappeared for a second. <laughs> no, yeah, I can still see you, bro. Okay. <laughs> You're all good. <laughs> all right. Uh, but no, you look great. You're, I think. Rex, you you you're supposed to look at the camera on this one, but one of you two guys got it wrong. So, yeah, you did you did just go out there, Evan. Is your mom still trying to get in touch with you? Yeah, <laughs> it's embarrassing. Gosh, All right, mind, I'm recording a podcast. Yeah, come on, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> All right, here we go. Another action shot. Nice. Can you, can you tell whose photographer was taking all the photos? <laughs> Just wait till you get to my photographer. Did you upload photos? Oh, you're doing the robot. I I don't know if I was talking or doing something. I don't know what my <laughs> hand is doing. Oh, nice. Whoa, you your your lightsaber is like tripping me out right now. It almost looks like it's like white invisible or something. I think I, I don't I think it was off. Well, that. yeah, it has to be off, but like it doesn't look like it has sharp edges like the rest of your hilt. So it looks like a fuzzy beam. It's kind of wild. Oh, yeah, that's true. I can see that. I guess the camera auto focused on your, your, the details of your hand and stuff, but not <laughs> the blade, which is really tripping me off. <laughs> you need to get a day blade for that thing. There you I know, go. I really do. That looks good, though. I like the look of, I mean, it's like overcast. So I think you can, you got away with it. Yeah. Yeah, the weather wasn't too bad. I'm like, was the last yeah, year around? Nice. I almost died on the way in. Yes, it was. Yeah, last year was raining like crazy. Yeah, so on... you're going the wrong direction, maybe. Ah, no, nope, those are your, those are your pictures. Oh, uh, oops, I must have I must have sent in the same. Yeah, ones. I got uh, both of y'all. I got several of the same pictures from you guys. I think. Yeah, there we go. That's the shot. Yeah, that was a cool shot. Very cool, guys. There's Heather, Evan, yay! And here's some more of the uh, behind the scenes of that shot. We had to get as many shots as possible. Did you keep changing the color of the blade? Is that why it's sometimes blue, sometimes it's green? It looks green uh, the whole time. Well, I think it was. I think I actually ended up changing it to purple at the very end, but I don't think I ever went blue. I may have for a few minutes. It was blue for a little while, not long. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You kept changing the color. Wait, so that's that's Heather's that's Abby and Heather's old officer, and we upgraded her to the Wampa wear, which is what you see on the nice. right. Nice, wow, Wampa wear looks great. Not that the old doesn't look bad or doesn't look good, but the uh, the Wampa wear just looks so authentic. Yeah, I really, really want one. Yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, so beautiful. 
I got the I got the white wampa wear. Uh, well, actually, I got the whole suit, um, but I need to I need to lose a few stone, as the Irish would say, so I can fit in it properly. Yeah, it's, it's okay if I'm going. <gasps> wrap yourself up in a girdle. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Well. Yeah. It was a fun really trip. Cool. We were there for a couple hours. Like two hours. Yep. And then we went to uh, get some get some uh, Mexican food after. I think Paul and Jen had to leave us though. Yeah, we had to go home. But yeah, we missed out on the the Mexican food. Womp, womp. It's a it's a tradition. Whenever we do relay, we got to go eat at uh, uh, what's it called El Bronco. That's where we always go after <laughs> relay. El Bronco. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, yeah that's good. Oh, I can't remember why they call it here in the states. The Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to our top story. Top story. Excuse me, that's the, uh, that's the wrong franchise. I think I don't care. Whoa. Obi Wan himself showed up for this. It's him. I hope you liked my show. <laughs> all right i need to work on the accent i say it's like he's really in the room with me <laughs> <laughs> all right so kenobi I'm trying, I'm trying for dick van dyke channeling you and mcgregor <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird combination <laughs> yes kenobi the long-awaited it finally happened no more poor you and McGregor asked in every interview for seven years. <laughs> Would you do Obi-Wan Obi -Wan Kenobi again? <laughs> and he said yes. Yeah. Thank goodness. It was great. And it, I guess it kind of, I mean, if we were to talk about in a whole, I guess it can kind of nip it in the bud. To where people aren't going to ask him that anymore. I mean, it's not setting it up for another sequel. Or... Until we have every single day of his life chronicled, people are going to ask <laughs> if he would come back again. That's, right, true. Yeah. That's true. Either until he dies or until he actually does it again. Gotcha. <laughs> so, but, but I would just but, like to point out that this is the very first time, and I love it, the very first time I've ever gotten a show where at the very beginning of the very first episode, you've got a previously <laughs> yes yes true well they did that they did that in uh star trek discovery season two if you remember they did a they did that's a, season uh, two this yeah. is the beginning of a okay, whole brand true. new that's show true. yeah episode one season one previously <laughs> that is yeah. true they've never yeah. done that in any of the star wars stuff or for a series that just started off <laughs> Between that montage and then opening on Order 66, it's like, oh, here, we're going to emotionally crush you for the first 10 minutes. Just prepare yep. you for what the next six hours are going to do to you. <laughs> yeah. I know. For the longest time, I always said, as much as I love Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan, I didn't think there was a story here. I've never been so happy to be proven wrong. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I love I. I think, uh, I mean, for me, like kind of big picture, I think that it, I really closed the book on the, uh, I guess, sort of the relationship between him and Anakin. Uh, that's, that's ultimately what I, what I got out of it the most was there was always that feeling from Obi-Wan where it was like, you know, I, I, you know, I killed Anakin, I killed my best friend. Um, but you know, you get that, you get that reveal sort of at the end where it's like no you didn't kill anakin i did and that was like that was to me was like the oh my, yeah that was like the yeah. soul crushing moment yeah yeah that's all and into it for sure so yeah sorry to skip ahead but that was like <laughs> to, like that that was that was really uh, kind of the big 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 thing i got out of the show so what did you guys think of the uh this is this is kind of just i guess stepping away from the story and stuff but the fact that hayden christensen was on the show and that he was, uh, you know, that he looked a little bit older. 
I want more. I want more. Like I, you know, I think when you know the first few episodes, the only thing we see of him is the Order sixty six, and then him sparring with Obi Wan in the Jedi Temple. And I was like, we, I, I know that he's in that suit. I want to see him in there. And then you do, and it's worth it. But I still don't feel like I got what I wanted from Hayden. I want more. I think that he still has, um, he still has redemption for him as an actor in star Wars, because I think people are finally ready to accept him and his role. Um, and I think they need to capitalize that on that at some point and have about, him come back. How about next summer? <laughs> Cause he'll, he's, in the, he's in the Ahsoka series. Is he? Well, that would make perfect rumored, sense. Because they, they don't officially announce casting announcements, except so, for the woman playing Sabine. And the um, Ahsoka series is set when? uh it is presumably it's, yeah it's the mando timeline so it's where it's where we see ahsoka in mando we're going to cover between the end of rebels and there and beyond right oh okay so post return okay. of the jedi so okay so we might get we might get a flashback we might get a force ghost we don't know hmm a force ghost would be cool. I just want to see. I want to see Hayden as himself. Although I did love to see him behind that crack in the mask. Yeah. The uh, so if you've seen, obviously, the finale of this pairs very well with the season two finale in Rebels with mm -hmm. Ahsoka and Vader fighting. And if you notice, Obi Wan hits this side of the mask, Ahsoka hits that side of the mask. So everybody's pointing out like his two people that were most important in Anakin's life was Obi-Wan and Ahsoka, but it took Luke to take the whole mask off. Whoa. Oh, wow, oh, yeah, that's yeah. deep right there. That's deep. Yeah. yeah, you just threw us right in there. Wow. <laughs> Am I frozen? You were frozen. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm back. Um, uh, 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 before we get too far into it, um, I wanted to, what did you guys think of the uh, like obi-wan's job like when he first starts off and he's like basically just harvesting the meat from a giant flying beast on tatooine clearly there is no health department on tatooine <laughs> <laughs> i love that i thought that was so cool and so unnecessary it was like, <laughs> it's like let's just like what kind of job would he get to stay off the grid you know what, what would was he do was it the meat from a crate dragon or was it something else? It was like a giant manta, like manta looking creature. When when I first saw it, I thought it was a pergil. I thought they crashed a pergil. I'm going to find like, it. I, I can't figure out what that was. And then I need somebody to just be like, dummy, it was this. <laughs> <laughs> I but, think I'd, I'd like to one day go back and binge watch Kenobi because, you know, we were waiting a, a week between episodes. I think it would be an experience for sure to just sit down and just watch it like binge watch all six episodes in one day yeah they did it uh when the finale aired they did a screening in canada so they played the whole series basically in a theater i've been there i went to canada a couple weeks ago <laughs> i've been oh, near the border <laughs> it's called a boga a boga boga hmm. well there you go it's a boga are you sure you're not talking about the thing from episode three? Because that's right. what is that what the boga is? That's what its its name is. The that's the thing. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, the the lizard. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe, right? maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. So if you're like me, we're wondering. Whoops! Can you get ah. me? <laughs> gonna, gonna the money doesn't gonna... jingle jingle. It's exactly. It's old. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Jet, here we go. I'm gonna pull that. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is gonna be sweet. So let me. Gunner's experimenting. Awesome. This can't right. go well. Yeah, this it usually doesn't. So just uh, just hang in there. And you know what? Actually, just the fact that you said that, maybe I shouldn't do this. <laughs> well, now you have to. All right. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I have to. All right. Here that that SpongeBob meme of three hours later <laughs> that thing yes that thing 
I thought it was like is... the rib meat from a crate dragon. It's, it's definitely like a... not a crate dragon. Yeah, what the heck is that thing? It's hmm. like a baby crate dragon or something. I don't know. Uh, one of many, one of many reasons why they need to put out like supplemental materials. The other is well, I need I need detailed photos of all those costumes he's wearing. Kenobi season two will be uh, a deep dive into the strange animal he was cutting up um, and a look in his wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just need them to stand in place and just do 360 turnarounds for like five <laughs> minutes. On the I need to see I need to see Obi Wan and book of boba fett uh i need to see clone armor from those yeah so i need to see noticed, these different i noticed they are different between the two shows because i've looked at because i'm crazy like that i've yeah. seen detailed photos the ones in boba fett and the ones in kenobi are different how different i don't know very different yeah. I don't know if they tried something in Boba Fett and like it's one scene we've got like one suit we'll just CGI duplicate them or whatnot but in what they're wearing in Kenobi looks much closer to the suits that we wear the yes. boots are different because um, they're wearing they're wearing basically the same thing that the First Order and the new Stormtroopers wear but they have plastic spats over them hmm. well I saw that they that they were 501st members some of the people who played clones yes right there yeah, were yeah. some there were some 501st members there not wearing their 501st costumes mm. they were 501st members playing the 501st legion but not wearing 501st costumes except, <laughs> except, they were wearing, except they were wearing 501st costumes just not 501st approved costumes i think they figured out in whenever they uh casted the 501st members for the mandalorian that not only did they already have the kits and stuff but they already have the walk and the mannerism mm -hmm. and stuff so they're probably doing the same thing like oh well instead of hiring an actor and teaching them how to walk like a stormtrooper just get a stormtrooper because that's true yeah. that's what we do yeah because i mean we you know we when you wear a stormtrooper you know four five six times by that fifth time you kind of get get a hang of how you want to walk and how you want to wear it and how you want to be seen yeah yeah i think yeah it's it's almost like you know it's like hiring an actor versus someone who's just fresh off the street yeah and that and it doesn't matter what suit you're wearing whether if it's the one you made yourself or the one that's given to you if you're you know actually trooping then you'll you'll be able to to uh uh uh, uh you know carry yourself the right way yeah Very there cool. are a lot of fun little cameos throughout kenobi um the jedi in the first in that first shot from order 66 that's uh ming na's stunt double so the uh, fennec shand that's her oh. stunt double. Oh, that's okay. cool um jumping ahead to like well in episode two the we swear she's not a drug dealer uh, I was someone's daughter. Girl is you and McGregor's daughter. What? Yeah, the like the the pink haired girl on that planet that I can't remember that started with a D, Dayu, Dayu, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's you and McGregor's daughter. Hmm. Um, to go back, the uh, the mole creature that gives him a ride in the truck is Zach Braff. Yeah, yeah. from Scrubs. <laughs> Everybody immediately hates that character. <laughs> oh my god, man! I, I love that character because he was like so likable for a second. He was like, "Oh wait, this is actually like, I got something I think you want to see." <laughs> yeah, it's like what a turd. Oh well, <laughs> that's great though. It's it's pretty cool that that you know that you're you're an actor that somebody that lots of people know and they put you up to something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the the group of refugees in the final episode. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like YouTube celebrities and podcasters in there. Um, the Rex and Around dude is in there. Yep. He's in one of the episodes? Yeah. He's, Whoa. he's the, the, the group of refugees that they're trying to save. Uh huh. He's one of them. Wow. That's so cool. Oh, did he's, I tell you? I'm from, I'm, I'm, I'm in there too from this podcast. Yeah. They, they were like, hey, you want to come <laughs> on? And I forgot to tell you guys. Sorry. So, wow. I was yeah. at the premiere. I was in the, Kenobi oh cave. yeah right okay 
That's that's a joke, by the way. I wasn't invited. <laughs> yeah, we found, we found this podcast on YouTube. They have dozens of listeners. Fly them up to <laughs> California. <laughs> We're gonna pick the guy who doesn't actually uh, do any of the editing to fly out. <laughs> that's what happened. It was weird. Yep. And the uh, the StarWars.com YouTube channel posted a little video. Because one of their show hosts is also one of the people in that in those scenes, so she did a little behind the scenes, and she's like talking to you and McGregor on set and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. That's nice. cool. That is cool. I have to go back. Um, one, uh, I had a friend of mine reach out, and he uh, he was watching the I guess it was the very last episode, and. I guess one of the last lines that Obi-Wan says is hello there again, right? Yes. That is his last line, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Ewan McGregor or is that Alec Guinness's voice? That's Ewan McGregor. It's Ewan McGregor? Yeah. Don't think it sounds a little bit a little bit different, a little weird. No. I mean I have to go back and rewatch the show, but he he's look at, look at Wayne. Wayne. He he's spent like, a lot oh. of time researching alec guinness's performance and his voice and making revenge of the sith he literally had a loop of alec guinness's dialogue that he would just play what? to get the, get the speech patterns and everything down dang <laughs> so it, he's just doing a really good job of or he's doing his best he's Obi-Wan just a really Kenobi. good actor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i enjoyed it i loved it yeah um the, uh, it it was weird to see in the beginning he was way more like broken than I expected him to be I was like I know he's not going to be doing like Jedi flips and lightsabers and everything in the first episode but it was like oh oh this dude's broken this dude's this dude's not having a good time yeah, he couldn't not- even fight he couldn't even help out a, a fellow uh, you know Jedi in, in need and ends up costing him the dude's life well it's not that he couldn't he wouldn't the dude yeah, came to him right, and was like right. master kenobi i need your help and he, kenobi's just like no run hide yeah stop whatever you're doing yep so. um what do you guys think about the whole like little leia thing i loved it i that loved whole... it so much she and then the... like she was so freaking cute but at the same time she was like like she had this awesome like little fire in her and it was so like authentic to i I think what what the role would be yeah she was absolutely perfectly cast yeah yeah i like that too and and i have a a two-year-old and she reminded me so much of my little girls like oh my goodness she's so sweet and then (laughs) uh (laughs) <laughs> and and all of it was great uh only only gripe i have is i i it's i'm kind of getting like uh flashbacks of the vespa chase because uh the the chase of you know flea yeah so flea is in the series right that was everybody got excited about the, that the, flea the whole, cinematic universe yeah the whole t- chase with the flea and his gang of people trying to get Leia. Want to run through the woods? It's so bad. Oh it's God, it's so, so, it's so no. bad. It's so no. bad. I'm like, look, I'm like, look, there is no way that you guys couldn't edit it better. Like, there's got to be a way to make it look more like. She knows those woods. That's literally her backyard. No, it was like a whole bunch of like, oh, I'm like so close right behind you. Oh, trip fall over. We're like, oh. Yeah, because it's, just... it's uneven. She knows oh. the terrain. So she can like, she knows where there's, oh, there's a route over there. I can hop over it because she's there like every day. Yeah. She knows hey. that terrain. You're doing a great job, Paul. <laughs> okay, here's what you do. You go find a 10 year old and you chase them around and find out. Holy shit, these little no, and that's the thing. I know we know a kid. I just thought that the editing could have been better 
in that it seemed particular like they were like, sequence. They were just like super slow and like she was she was really slow and they were really slow and they were like, oh, I almost got you. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That's just, that just bothered me. I was like, man, they couldn't. I think, it, I think it bothers a lot of people more than it, and it should because it was like, what, like a 10 second scene. So it was like, okay, you know what? When you're acting with kids, you don't want to have them like go in full speed and having like these gigantic adults chasing them who could land on her and squash her. Yeah, it's and, probably uh, even worse now these days. You can't get, you know, can't I do still, nothing. I, I, I still don't understand the whole problem with the Vespa chase. Oh, it was a on. crowded city street. How fucking fast did you want them to fucking go? <laughs> I want I want the speeder bikes in the freaking the indoor forest speed. Okay, that's what I want. To watch a speeder bike chase. Yes, that's what I. What you're watching is a regular <laughs> family car. Give oh. that. It was an, It's a politician sedan. Oh. Yeah, and this is a Volvo. Scooters. Oh man. <sighs> well. It's just how okay. I feel. Here, here, here's what here's what you do when you see the scene. You're like, oh, this could have been edited better. Why they can't just catch her? Remember this very important phrase: it's fake, and it's in space. That's that's true. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's why, like, if I see something silly like that, I just I'm like, oh, that's silly, and then I literally just move on. But then you'll go on YouTube and see a three hour video <laughs> from a fat white dude who's like. Right, uh, and it's only about that scene. It's like a three-hour video. I would be that guy making the video. That's the and thing. Then, I haven't <laughs> seen any of these videos, but like I'm sitting there watching the mo- the show, and I'm like, I'm stuck on this crap because I'm <laughs> thinking about how they made the movie. Oh, Which, so you're or, you're the guy. You just got to move past it. You just got to yeah, move past it. Don't worry, I'm not going to make a video. video. This was my it. video. <laughs> I want to find who it is because it's 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 got to come down to one person. Every time there's somebody that's complaining about these shows, it's always the exact same complaint worded in the exact same way. So obviously, it could be a, uh, 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 to it, it could website. be a legitimate complaint. <laughs> or you could just talk over top of me. It's your choice. <laughs> you can do that too. So you oh. can do that and I'll just smoke. There's somebody on YouTube who has a big following and everybody just takes their cues from him because we know yep. it's him. It's yes. <laughs> I, I think that is that's probably true. Yeah. So all of these episodes were directed by Deborah Chow, which is yes. probably why it was so awesome. I mean, not that the uh, the last seasons where they had all the different directors and everything was, you know, I thought so it, was, this one, it was great, but. This one, unlike Mando and Boba Fett, was very much focused on a singular storyline. We have you know, there's one one storyline going all the way through. Yes, it's Obi Wan's show. I don't understand why people are saying that. He's literally in every scene. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that. Sorry, I definitely see that. Pushing myself on a tangent about YouTube and idiotic complaints. <laughs> <laughs> so I started it all. I I apologize. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah no I I could feel that there was uh, that yeah it's just a very very there's like a whole theme throughout the the whole series that's like a lot stronger than I feel like the Mandalorian series or I guess Clone Wars which is I, now that I think about it other than Boba Fett Mandalorian and I mean there really aren't that many series yet I think compared to what there are ultimately going to be a star wars series but yeah. as of now that i feel like this is one of the most really the the strongest ones oh god okay i, I guess like live action live action sorry i don't know i guess <laughs> I'm, seven seven series so far yeah there's probably going to be just so many more uh two more we got cassian yeah we got andor coming or andor end of august ahsoka is probably next year we're gonna get more Uh, boba fett we're getting more we're getting mando season three that's early next year probably like february um bad batch season two is in september i think i think bad batch and andor might be airing at the same time so that'll be confusing there's going to be more tv star wars than there is movie star wars it's going to be like star trek 
Oh man. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a couple years before we see a Star Trek or Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> before we see a Star Wars movie. Yeah, like, I feel like yeah, the Star Wars Star Wars movies seem to have sort of uh uh died out for the time being. Yeah, it's yeah. it's probably gonna come back to another uh Star Wars rush. Uh I would say we're at least minimum three years probably closer to four or five years from a star wars movie yeah taika's movie is probably going to be next and he hasn't finished writing it what yeah he did it he's been doing press for thor love and thunder and he's been asked about star wars and he's like yeah i'm, I'm still writing it when i'm I done with it when i'm done with this i'm gonna go finish it <laughs> i saw that he asked natalie portman if she wanted to be in in star wars and she yeah. was like <laughs> She was like, excuse me? <laughs> so. Yeah. What does it's, that it's mean? A, it, it's a funny quote. Is you know, Because he's working on Star Wars now. And he's like, oh, did you ever think about doing those Star Wars movies? Oh. She's like, yeah. I did them already. <laughs> <laughs> That's who we need to see come back. Padme. Padme series. Oh, Star Wars Padme. I want. If they could bring back any of them if they could find a way to bring back padme i'd love it bring back the handmaidens because the freaking padme yeah. book that would be so cool i've expanded out the handmaidens so cool like bring kira knightley back now yes. and have her like do a story set because sabe like the character she played in episode one is still doing stuff now in the original trilogy timeline huh. she's been a big part of the uh the Darth Vader comics. It's been really good. Yeah, I like yeah. the whole hand, uh, the handmaid's uh, storyline and everything. It's really yeah. cool. Read the three Padme books. They're really good. Yeah, I need to get that. I'm sure they, could, they have an audio books. I think. Yes, they do. That's what I need to do. They are read by the voice Perfect. of Padme from Clone Wars. Oh. I met her. Where? I, I need her, but I met her I in need the <laughs> Oh, oh, I made it. That was a I made it weird thing. with her in a hotel lobby. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Where'd you meet her? Uh, I'm I met her in an airport. Okay. At what were you at the airport? What were you at the airport for? Yeah, where were you going? The, it was I was going home from the premiere. Ah, <laughs> that's what you're looking for. It's been it's been so long now that I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to. Addend that story. It was the premiere of the Rise of Skywalker. That was still the last movie premiere. That is true. Yeah. <clears throat> oh man. So uh, so what else, guys? What else was was so great about the series, or not so great, or was it just Actually, perfect? I'm surprised people didn't have a problem with the helmet getting cut again, because part of me was like, "This is really cool looking," and the other part of me was like, "Seeing it." <laughs> yeah I, I think it's funny it's just, it shows i don't know you could argue it as it's like this is vader's weakness when he gets the people that are really close to him that were close to anakin he's i don't know he's weak he has flaws <clears throat> they need to make that helmet lightsaber resistant and how about that because yeah well you think he fought Obi-Wan, well, Obi-Wan didn't hit him in the Death Star, but he got him pretty good here. Ahsoka got him. Luke scored a hit on him on Bespin. Maybe Vader's not that good of a fighter. Mm. Well, so, I, I mean, after after he gets his suit, uh, I mean, he was a great fighter, but he lost all his limbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... Yeah. So. But... I did like Luke his. Got him because he was playing around. He kept. Mm. He was. He was stringing Luke along, letting Luke think, you know, I'm getting the better of you, because he only fights him one handed until he gets hit in the arm. Well, Luke yeah. hits him in the arm, it pisses him off. Yeah, it's like, and that's where he immediately like, and there goes your hand. Now, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> yeah, the same thing happens with Obi Wan. He fight. He starts off one handed, and then. He eventually gets pissed off and goes double, double gripping it. Of course, K 
counterpoint to everything I just said was the amazing Vader versus Reva fight. That was freaking awesome. Oh, that was so good. Or Vader yeah. didn't even draw his own sword. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no. He took hers, split it apart, gave her a half, then took it back. Yeah. I'm going to kick your ass with your own weapon. <laughs> <laughs> First few hits you get for free, I won't even cut it on. I'll just stop you myself and push you away. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he was just standing there, let her just, and she's like, no, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah, I do I do feel bad, though, that uh, apparently Qui-Gon is the only Jedi who dies from getting stabbed by lightsaber. All the other ones are mostly fine. Well, he's the only light fighter who got stabbed through the stomach. Yeah. All the rest of them are dark siders who have like, I'm too angry to die. <laughs> to <laughs> like Darth, Darth Sion from Knights of the Old Republic, they just put all their pieces back together. Yeah. Plus, we don't we don't know the Udapau or Powan anatomy. Yeah, that's true. He could just be a cavity there in the center. Maybe that's. Uh, <laughs> We've got know. two stomachs to know that. Yeah. Hmm. They've got two no. stomachs. If, if Vader knew what was going on with her, Grand Inquisitor probably knew that or Vader is like, at some point she's going to turn on you, so be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Vader could Vader could see her her BS from a mile away. I mean, it's not like she she didn't seem to camouflage it terribly well. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you guys think of the Grand Inquisitor? The, the makeup and the voice is different than Rebels. It was a little throwing at first, but he was really good. He was really good. I thought I thought he did a great job acting. It was very very subdued um, and very sinister. I like in in Rebels. It was he was sinister like in a kind of a cartoonish way. Um, but sorry, I lost all my light <laughs> after <laughs> hours. It's yeah, he was like sinister lighting. in a cartoonish way, like a mustache twirling villain. But in here, in in Kenobi, it was very much like a a more realistic, like oh my, like oh my god, this guy, this guy is literally going to kill me. Yeah, I was hoping that one of them would just you know helicopter away one time for us. But... <laughs> oh, I wanted the helicopter so bad. I was, I was like, please, please, one. Now they <laughs> did. She did get it spinning at one point, right? Yeah, they did the spinning. They just didn't did the spinning the with it. Yeah. <laughs> So why would they ever do that in Rebels? <laughs> because they're force awesome. using. Yeah, dude. Seriously, I want to see that. I want because it was that. a kids show. Let's I want to. I want to see that. I want them to commit to it. You know what I'm saying? I want them to no, commit no. to the helicopter. I want to forget it ever happened. <laughs> I want to see it. But Reva was a, Reva was amazing. She was incredible. Yep. Just a straight up terrifying villain. Also, when she was interrogating Leia, you're like, this is every single time I've talked to a child. <laughs> it's just a little like, I, I, I can't smack you. <laughs> My uh, a co-worker, was, we were watching it and he was saying like, yeah, I knew she was, uh, I knew she was good. I knew she was good always. <laughs> He's not... I can tell there was, there was something, <laughs> there was something going on with her because she was just like, it just seemed like she was. She, she was different from the rest of the Inquisitors. Yeah. And I think part of that is because having watched Rebels and having read some of the comics, like Inquisitors and, and from Jedi Fallen Order, like Inquisitors are a certain way and they act a certain way. And she, from the beginning to me, was like, it seemed a little different. And I wasn't sure what that meant. Like, I didn't think that she was going to go and like, you know, help Kenobi or anything or that she was like a, a good person. But I did think that there was something... There was a there was an ulterior motive, and I was uh, I was just yeah. waiting for it to drop. Yeah, you could tell there was something going on with her. She's she was like, this is personal in a different way to you. Yeah, yeah, she was she was she was way too way too angry, and she was way too like eager to take it take things as far as as they could go. Yeah. Um. How? Where did that? Uh, what was her Tala? Tala? Yeah. The girl that like was a imperial officer or something, and then she turned. Yeah. Like, where yeah. did that come from? I I need to go back and watch that because I still 
I'm confused Which where part? she came from. Uh, well, when a man and woman love each other very no, much. No, 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 no. What I mean is, <laughs> like, how did she start helping? She says it. She says I, she joined the Empire when it first started because she's like, she thought they were the good guys. They were bringing order to the galaxy, like they told everybody. They were, re but, they were the Republic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then she quickly realized, oh, this is not what, you know, you really mean the other thing when you're saying order. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so she started working from within, using her imperial clearances to help people get moved around and safe to safety. She was one of the first people who started the path, was it called? Yeah. And yeah. then <clears throat> they, I'm pretty sure if we took that story long enough, which if, if they don't make Obi-Wan Kenobi season two, then I want the path, a, a Star Wars story. <laughs> Give me that story with Reva and Quinlan Boss. And yeah, Ice, yes. Cube, Ice Cube Jr. shows up, that, you know, Quinlan Voss shows up. Did they, did they, uh, uh, like hints that Quinlan Voss is still alive. Yes. They said he was alive post Order sixty six. Yeah, but not necessarily. <clears throat> what is it? What is Kenobi? Ten years after Order sixty six. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're we're roughly a decade later. Yeah. Yeah. Luke's ten years old. Yeah. So yeah, this is taking place at the same time as Solo. So theoretically, on the other side of the planet. Han and Chewie are showing up and starting to work for Jabba. <laughs> it's and a small world, or it's a small universe. Somewhere out there, you know, young Jin has just joined Saw Gerrera's Band of Rebels. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, we're still a couple years before Andor and Rebels. I, I was trying to think if there was any connections to that. No, there isn't. There might be a connection with Ahsoka, maybe? Maybe as a flashback. Yeah. But I, I don't think Ahsoka is going to see Obi-Wan at any point. Yeah. I rewatched some Rebels after watching Kenobi, and I was like, no, she she's acting like he's gone. She, she's not acting like he's out there. I don't know. And that's what I really liked finishing up Kenobi is like I could see like how this show connects to Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, it connects to Clone Wars, Rebels, uh the original trilogy. It like it branches out and touches everything. And you can just see how it's it's a very large piece that fits right in the middle and just like, oh this is how you get from point A to point B to point C. I think I think to me the next big uh the next big gap that needs to be filled, Darth Maul. <laughs> Yes, I want to know what Darth Maul was doing for a decade. <laughs> yeah, have y'all seen? No, this is something that I did see on the internet that there are pictures of a, a Darth Maul on the fan set film. with Ahsoka. Fan film. Oh, is that what that is? It's a fan film. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Glad you cleared that up. It looked good from the photo I saw. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope that we get some more live action uh, Darth Maul. I was actually kind of wondering if he was going to show up in Kenobi at all. I was sort of like in the back of my mind, I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. They, they addressed that early on. They're like, no, that story's already been told. It was in Rebels. Yeah. yeah. When, I mean, in Rebels, is there a, a point where Obi Wan sees him and he's like, oh, this is the first time I've seen you since I whooped Jazz? Or no, uh, the, the, no there's that's an in the Clone Wars. That's right. They do see yeah, each other. Obi Wan Wars. has some very good staff lines to <laughs> Maul and Clone Wars. Yeah, I don't yeah, care so much about Maul and Kenobi because I feel like we've gotten that. I just want to get, I want to get Maul and Crimson Dawn, which is going to be, you know, yeah. could be post Kenobi. Solo but thing. Yeah. yeah. Do you want Solo? Know. Like, do you want? the solo story with that a part of it or do you want that a uh, whole no another story with just the crimson on no hans no solo nah, either way both? i don't care both yeah that's <laughs> what i was thinking both would be i mean yeah if you have solo you'll have both but if you just said ah forget solo let's just do the whole crimson dawn same exact time or right after 
solo. Because I, I want to know what happened to when he flies off in his giant dagger ship, whatever it is. Ten years after Revenge of the Sith, he's a crime boss who's the head of a major crime family. Five years later, he's living in dirt. Yep. <laughs> he's trapped on this planet and he's literally hiding in the shadows with literally doesn't even have a shirt on his back. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an interesting journey. I really I would I would love to see how he makes it from from crime boss to he was on Malachor, right? That's where they found him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it? That's, yeah, that's Twilight of the Apprentice. Yeah, that's the Rebel season two finale. Wow. You should watch Rebels. It's really good. Yeah, I haven't finished all of it. That's what the only series. Well, no, that's not true. Resistance. I haven't finished that either. Yeah, you can take it or leave it. Well, Resistance is good, but if you're if you're going between the two, I'm going to say Rebels. Yeah, and it doesn't really resistance doesn't add much to the canon. Like Rebels adds a lot to the Star Wars. I like Thrawn and everything, so that's always yeah, that's interesting. Um, And then, of course, last but not least, we get to well at the beginning, uh, Obi Wan's trying to contact Obi uh, Qui Gon, and finally he gets he just shows up. Yep, looking looking just like the day he left us. Yeah, as soon as he said, like in the first episode, he said, he said, you know, Master Qui Gon, he, he said something like, I'm trying to reach out to you or something. I was like, oh, we're getting Qui Gon at the end of this series. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a feeling. I had kind of forgotten about it because they hadn't mentioned it much. Um, but when, when that happened at the beginning, all I could think about was um, Yoda's journey in, was that Clone Wars or it was in Clone Wars, right? Where he. Yeah. Yeah, and all that's all I could think about because that was what his goal was was to contact Qui Gon Jinn. Well, in Clone Wars, Qui Gon contacted Yoda and told yeah. him, "This, this is what you need to do." Yeah, so that's just a continuation of that. Yeah, I was I surprised knew... that we actually saw him. I was expecting like a voice. Oh, I didn't expect to actually so see good. him. It was so yeah. good. It delivered yeah. so good. And then I was kind of, I was confused because once again, this is me just picking apart the editing and everything, but oh, here we go. That last episode, it shows uh, Darth Vader on his throne and mm-hmm. he talks to the emperor. Yes. And in my mind, I was like, well, I guess this is the end because this is where you would normally cut it cut the, to the credits or whatever but then it stops and then it picks back up again and i was like what the heck like i thought that would have been the end of it as far as the editing goes i was and then i was thinking to myself oh we haven't seen qui-gon yet and i just sat there and waited for him <laughs> and there he was but I the, mean, there's... the way that that editing was it set me up to because f- normally it would end on something like a shot like that where Darth Vader talks to Palpatine and then it zooms away and it shows him sitting on his throne and everything. And then it goes dark and then goes to credits, but then it picked back up. And I was like, wait, why, why is it picking back up? And then, oh, cause they haven't showed us the real, the real takeaway, which is he finally talks to Qui-Gon. You get to see, uh, you know, Liam I mean, Neeson. the show, the show basically has two endings. Like if you think of, if you think of Kenobi and Anakin being, more or less two main characters of the show they both each get their own ending and Mm -hmm. we see when he talks to when vader talks to the emperor that closes the loop with him like irrationally hunting kenobi because after that point it's over and so that's kind of the that's the closing of that story the emperor is like hey no uh uh-uh this is over you're done uh and um and so that was it for them and then we had we got the closure with (laughs) uh with obi-wan after that so yeah who's the more important character yeah it makes but they got me that's all i'm saying is they got me they threw me off because i I was so i'm so used to the the way that you know things are typically edited and and put together and stuff so that was that was kind of refreshing but also at the same time it threw me off i was like what the heck like yeah Yeah. the the last episode was a little weird for me because it's like yeah the the Obi-Wan Vader fight is like where you kind of like, okay, I've, this is kind of our emotional climax. This is where we should end. And it's like, 
oh, then we've got the whole last bit with Reva, and like I understand why it's there, and Obi Wan comes and talks to her, and you know he helps save her and all that kind of stuff. And, like it makes sense, and we don't we have not said enough about how much of a badass Peru is. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, like the last scene, you have to end with Obi Wan and Qui Gon because you have to end on that positive, hopeful note. You can't yeah. end on the the dark note of Vader pouting. <laughs> <laughs> you're, abs- you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. But yeah, it was a little weird when like you go through this whole emotional climax with Obi Wan and Vader, and then it's like, but there's still more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they had to kind of. If they didn't do that, it would have. I felt like it would have set up for like another sequel or something, yeah. but with yeah, the way left the, too many loose ends. Yeah, exactly. But they, they tied it all up to the point where, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but that model is the same model that you see Luke yeah. put together in, you know, a new hope. Yeah. The That's same the, one that the T-16 that he's yeah, flying around with. Yeah. So that should tell you, that like it's come it's connected the 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 ends have have come together it reminds me that the ending reminds me a little bit of the ending of lord of the rings the books not the movie when um in the movies they go back to the shire and everything's happy and you know they they move on um but in the books when they return to the shire uh, they find saruman there so they've just they've defeated the, the dark lord and they come back to their home and there's another enemy that they have to defeat um and so it kind of reminds me of that when there's just when there's a little bit there's a little bit more it's part of the falling action where the characters return and things are not as they left them and they are basically irrevocably changed by the events of the show and then also by the uh by the events that happen after that climax yeah i see it i see it some deep stuff evan I have a question for you, for you guys. Did Reva know Luke, who Luke was? As in, like, did he know yeah. that, did she know that who she was, who she was trying to chase after? Did yes. she know that Luke is Anakin's son? Yeah, yes. absolutely. That's why Especially she was doing it. The name. She wanted to kill him because it's his son. She She knew... Because, like, you know, what, how else could you get back at someone who murdered children, murder their own how, kids? How did she know that it was his son? Because of the name. Luke. But this, she's also force sensitive. She could, there's probably his name's more to Skywalker. it. Skywalker. Oh, that's, well, is it? I mean, do, I mean, do, do, do they know there's a kid named Skywalker out there on, on that guy's moisture farm but did she know the name luke skywalker because i don't think she did i don't but i think she knew she figured out who he was i don't know how i mean she's she's uh, how else could she have survived in the inquisitorius for 10 years without vader like you know really really wait a second but this goes back to like you know the the original trilogy like did vader know that he had kids was he was he brainwashed did he did he not even know that he had kids or did he no he didn't so he He, never never had the slightest hint that he had kids not until after the death star was blown up yeah hang on then no there then there's like no then yeah how would rev how would she know if 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 darth if anakin didn't know to be fair i need to go back and rewatch it if she knew Luke's name, then that's how. Because <clears throat> I've only seen all the episodes once. I know it's shocking. Um, but Me too. The way I took it is she went after Luke and Owen and Beru because she saw that partial message from Bale and she was trying to get revenge on him. She was one last chance to go get Kenobi. Yeah. But was there enough context to, to know that that was you know well, Anakin's son. Knew, see, I, I don't think she knew that who Luke was she didn't know who Leia was I mean she knew she went after Leia because she's the daughter of Bail Organa and I, I don't not, think they ever said like 
Luke Skywalker. Like I don't. Ooh, you know, we are gonna have to go like, back and watch this. Like, what? What's your name? John Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> Any relation? <laughs> it's a very common name. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> I, I just based on my faulty memory, I'm thinking she didn't know. But I think it's interesting to see how close she got to like mm-hmm. the real way to defeat the Sith and defeat Vader and everything was literally like in her hand and she didn't know what she had. Yep. I mean that's that was the whole thing, like the whole the whole show, like everyone was so close to I mean, basically spoiling everything. Yeah. But just like Twitter every Wednesday. <laughs> Dude, oh I, this, I, to, I never, I, I never see any of that stuff to the point that you guys would message me on Friday and be like, have you seen it? And I'm like, well, it's coming out today. Or whatever. Like, no, it came out on Wednesday. I'm like, I, got, I totally I forgot. Got, I went three days without watching or hearing anything about it. Or so I was in. I was in Montreal when the when the finale came out, and I didn't get to see it till Friday. And I had someone already had spoiled it for me. So yeah. between in between Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because I remember Gunner, we went out with you, and I was like, "Yeah, somebody already spoiled the fact that um, Qui Gon comes back in the end." And to to me, I thought that was like the big reveal or whatever, and I thought that would ruin the whole episode. And Gunner, you were like, "No, it really doesn't." And I didn't believe you, but you were right; it doesn't really spoil it. No, it was not, almost like end credit scene. That's how yeah, it felt. No, but I did. It was just one of those things that, like, I even when I was getting towards the end of the, the very last episode, I was like, "Well, where's Qui Gon? They're gonna. Yeah. It's not gonna be. See, so you didn't really miss it. Everybody was expecting it. Yeah, you know? that was really the only major spoiler I saw. I would like to point out that I said from day one, if we're getting Obi Wan, then we're getting Qui Gon, and everybody told me, "Shut fuck up, you don't." Know <laughs> That's hey, true I've because already... nobody, nobody would believe that Liam Neeson would come back. Yeah, and do what he did. All bets are off now. Like any anyone is fair game to come back. I mean, friggin' Ian McDiarmid came back. You know, shitty Rise of Skywalker makeup and everything. I mean, damn, they can get anybody, dude. I and think that's they... just his face now. Yeah, <laughs> I think it might be. They might need to go a little bit heavier with the manga. <laughs> They're gonna put. I mean, everybody's gonna end up. What's gonna wind up in the Star Wars universe? You just wait. Everyone and see. who's still alive will be back. I, I will great. happily admit that I was wrong about many things going into Kenobi. <laughs> All good because things that came out of it, though. Yep. We we had the last time we saw Qui Gon. Well, saw he was only a voice. He was a collection of dots in Clone Wars. He, he mm-hmm. could not at that point manifest himself and he said, he literally says, my training was incomplete. I cannot show myself. So he so figured he, something out. Apparently he spent 10 years continuing to fix it, finish his training. Well, if, you, if Yoda, you know, <clears throat> Yoda got to him and they, they talked, um, did Yoda have the secret to staying around? Yeah, that's kind of why he disappeared when he died. Yeah, so you, you maybe watch Yoda was the able Jedi. to. It's really good. Yoda was able to impart some knowledge after uh, after Qui Gon's death, I suppose. So they they compared notes at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, Obi Wan showed up. He's like, no, 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 no. You got to carry the two. Carry the two. Trust me, this <laughs> is the important part. <laughs> All right, well, guys, I think we're about out of time here. That's, yeah. that's that's enough out of four white guys talking about Kenobi. Yeah, who the heck wants to hear? Loved it. Loved every. Loved we have, every part we of have it. we have good. This is this is different than what you'll see on the rest of YouTube because we have mostly good things to say about it, and all of anything negative is like dumb, stupid, nitpicky stuff that like no one actually gives a shit about. Like, it's. I never really get into the whole lore of it. It's just my personal editing and the. I'm frozen. There we well, go. Well, you're like a you're like a film guy, so like I get it. Like you know, it's it's my, hard for me not to see things, and I'm like, me, ah, but but my mind, but that's the problem is that it's not it has nothing to do with the story because it's taking me out of the story. That's the thing. It's uh, you know, so I love the whole and what. That's why I love Star Wars so much is because it's it is like if you could come up with like the craziest thing in your imagination, it would be Star Wars. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, and it and it be like cool and not like evil and crazy. You know, 
like it's actually fun and exciting and heartwarming all that good stuff and yeah we've all made friends you know enjoying this stuff so there's nothing better than you know it's true. all enjoying something that brings us together and uh but well, anyways I'm just, here, I'm just here to tell you guys how much better i am yeah well that's what we want yeah that's you really bring that part to the the squad cast and that's why we we have you here paul thank yeah. you all right well i think i'm gonna i'm gonna hit the hit the outro music all right so thank you guys for listening and for watching hopefully on youtube if you want to learn more about the 501st you can go to 501st.com and uh you can request us for events and we are at all across america the world yes all across the world too so you know just look up your your local 501st garrison get in touch with them and you can do all sorts of events we're all coming back from from the covid era and and, and we're back so if you're looking for uh pictures and stuff we got the the images from our well no those weren't on there oh my goodness we didn't even go over approvals this week wow next time fine. we'll get next it time. next time we don't have a show to talk about next time. But <laughs> if you we we didn't go over the approval, so if you want to check them out, look at the Garrison Tyrannus Instagram page, and you can see all of the approvals. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next uh, next. I guess we're doing this like once a month now, just to. No, we do it whenever we feel like it. Maybe we'll and, be back in the studio next time. Yeah, and we're we need to. I need to do a suit up video of my Bly, and we we need to get some more videos up here, some suit ups. I think give, um, give me a few more give me a few more troops with Rex so I can get a little bit more comfortable putting it on. Yeah. It's a little awkward when I put it on right now. Yeah, uh, Peter's video is at I think just went to fourteen thousand views. Which is Ridiculous. Pretty insane. Just can't get enough of that that Peter. <laughs> I can All right. And say how quickly I can get suited up and nothing. Yeah, Evan, yours is uh, from what it was like four months ago, I guess. It's at like, uh, like almost twelve hundred views. Nice. So it's uh, people love those uh, those costume videos. So it's true. And and there's not enough of them out there. So yep. let's give the people what they want. Yeah. Secret, secretly, Gunner just wants to, just wants more video of us in black spandex. Yes. It's true. <laughs> I, I keep all the B-roll. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I better stop. All right, guys. Till next time. Bye-bye.